welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday, June 4th, 2021. My name is Aubrey and this is my astrological outlook for the day. And this whole week we have had a very active week astrologically. We had a lot of simultaneous and direct aspects hitting exact this week. We have had Mercury retrograde in exact square to Neptune. That has really been causing a lot of confusion and illusion and delusion in terms of the facts and the information and the communication and the messaging that we're receiving. Also, it's bringing out a lot of things that have been hidden or shrouded in sort of mystery or hidden under the veil or under the surface of things, bringing out and exposing a lot of information that has been sort of underhandedly dealt with in the past. That is um, the Mercury retrograde and square to Neptune that we've had going on this week. We have also had the Sun in an exact trine to Saturn retrograde. This is a master builder frequency energetic. This energetic all week has been helping us to really get a sense of what we need to change and improve in our lives to move forward and bring them up to the next level that is more in alignment with what we want to build and where we want to go going forward. We also had the sun conjuncting the north node this week, really helping to align us with our purpose and our destiny and bring us into alignment, like I said, with the path that we're supposed to be walking now based on where we're at, the choices that we've made, the experiences that we've had and the growth and evolution that we've made up until this point. Also, we have had Mars in a trine with Neptune exact, and that has been doing a lot to sort of help us step outside of our ego and more look at more of like the bigger picture and like the um, overall experience and how we fit in and how what we're contributing is relating to the good, the greater good and helping us to connect to our more spiritual side and our altruism and our desire to be generous and giving and put our energy and our motivation towards helping others. That has been infused in this week as well. And finally, we've also had Venus in an exact trine with Jupiter in water signs, really just giving us the good feels and blessing, romance, relationships, partnerships, money, um, and everything just really infusing a lot of good spirited good natured jovial optimistic hopeful energy into our week so we have had all of these aspects hitting this week it's been a big week there's been a lot happening because of the nature of the energetics being trines a lot of times we don't even really necessarily notice or perceive these things but with the square to mercury this week we have definitely seen quite a bit of information coming out that's very contradictory to what we've been taught to believe up to this point and really one of our main goals and one of the main lessons that the planets have been pushing at us this week is to really try to align more with our intuition our um gut instincts about things and try to be steered in terms of making our decisions decisions and choices more by our internal navigation system and how things sort of resonate with us on a gut level instead of just listening to and believing all of the different information and narratives and spins and distorted truths and stuff like that that have been propagating in the news and the media and social media and it's really a time right now for rethinking and re-looking at mercury going retrograde saturn retrograde and pluto retrograde as well what has been going on this past six months or so what we've been being told what's been being presented to us what we've been um what's been being pushed at us in terms of information messaging communications and you know maybe it's not exactly what we thought it was. Maybe the truth is not exactly how it was presented to us up until this point. And maybe we need to rethink some things, go back and look at some things, Mercury retrograde, and maybe there's a different conclusion that we're going to come to after we've gone through this process of reevaluating the facts. Okay. So that is what is going on right now. It is going on collectively and it's going on in our individual lives. Now today, Friday, we don't, 
we still have Mercury retrograde in exact square to Neptune because Mercury's retrograding now. Mercury has slowed down and he's backing up slowly. So it's taking him a couple days to get through the degrees. So he's still at today 24 degrees of Gemini in exact square to Neptune at 24 degrees of Pisces. Remember in my report from yesterday, I said that 24 degrees of Gemini where Mercury retrograde is right now is the Sabian symbol of children skating on ice. So we really need to be careful right now about the information that's coming in. And we're kind of at a really shaky, unstable place in terms of the facts, the rationality of things, and just generally our understanding right now. We want to be very careful with our thoughts, our perceptions, and our understandings because there's a lot that is about to be exposed and there's a lot that is about to be... Um, provided to us as alternative viewpoints and other ways of looking at things here in the coming now and days and months going forward. And it's really important that we are open to that and that we are able to not be like totally solidified in our previous understanding of reality because, and also in terms of that saving, like I was saying, you know, we kind of want to be quite careful of our thoughts, our perceptions, our understandings of things right now because Mercury is an exact square to Neptune while retrograde and at the degree of skating on ice. So things are just a little bit slippery and unstable and we don't really want to crash and fall down some loop of ideology that is not serving us and that is not truly aligned with uh, what's actually going on when the fog clears. So... We just kind of want to be careful of what we are perceiving as reality right now and sort of try to be observant and detached as we go through this process. Now, and this Mercury is going to be at this degree through Saturday. So this aspect, Mercury retrograde square to Neptune, really... Um, confusing the mental processes of things and communications and distorting the way that we're viewing reality right now. This is what's going on and this is going to be persisting through the weekend as this next aspect that I'm going to talk about comes exact. And I mentioned this yesterday at the end of my report, but this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we are going to have Pluto making or Mars making an exact opposition to Pluto. Now, this is significant, this is important, this is an explosive and heavy and conflicting and confrontational energetic in and of itself. It just is. It's the full force of like the masculine archetype pitted against itself in a way. Pluto and Mars are really very much resonating to the same type of energy. Mars does it really fast and assertively and Pluto does it a lot more slowly but with a lot of power and a lot of control. And we are going to be having Mars in Cancer. And Mars right now, because of what Mars has been through this past year, is really like on a rampage for spiritual awakening and spiritual truth and is really fully embodying the role of the spiritual warrior in this moment. He did an extended stay in Aries this year and he went back and forth over the Aries point. Mars and Eris are like the twin sisters on the battlefield and they want the same things. And Mars, after his third conjunction with Eris as he transited through Aries this year really came out of it uh, motivated and ignited by a fight for spiritual truth and spiritual awareness and in his full spiritual warrior archetype like I said and he is in cancer for this opposition Pluto's in Capricorn Capricorn rules the establishment. It rules long-standing orders and situations of control and structure. And um, Pluto is the... That's Capricorn, where Pluto is. It's the um, long-standing control and power dynamics is what is in play when we're talking about Pluto and Capricorn. And... We have Mars in Cancer, and that's a sign of the family and taking care of and nurturing and providing for and 
with this face-off that we have going on, it's really the spiritual warrior fighting for the family, fighting for humanity and the needs of humans and for them to be taken care of and looked after and nurtured and their needs met properly. Facing off with Pluto, who is control in the sign of the establishment and long-standing power structures. And so with this dynamic going on, it's really a standoff this weekend collectively between the people and the power structure. And we're seeing this alongside that square that's going on from Mercury retrograde to Neptune. So the way I'm personally reading this over the weekend is I think that we are going to continue to get a lot of information that is leaking out, that is being exposed, that has to do with um, power and control dynamics that have been asserted on the people over this past year, this past couple years. And I think that, you know, it's just... It's just ripe for conflict this weekend. That's the, it's tension, it's tension building. And we just want to be mindful that this is the energetic that's going on. Like we're in it now. There's no going back. We are at the face off, you know, this, this energetic, this activation with Mars and Cancer opposite Pluto and Capricorn is a big deal, especially when simultaneously for this exact activation, we have Mercury retrograde going back, reevaluating things, looking at what happened, getting new information, getting new data, checking, double checking, triple checking our sources, figuring things out in a square to Neptune in Pisces. And remember, Jupiter is now in Pisces too, and Jupiter rules the truth. So with Jupiter in Pisces and Neptune in square to Mercury retrograde, I think that we are going to see a battle heating up between authorities and the people over the needs of the people. And I think that it's going to have a lot to do with the exposing of information that has been manipulated, that has been untruthful, that has been clouded or shrouded or veiled or made foggy in some type of way that has impacted a lot of people. And um, I just think that this is going to be one of the things that we're dealing with. I think that we are going to have a very, very interesting week next week following this conjunction over the weekend. It's probably a good weekend to kind of just be as low key, you know, sort of as you can. Um, again, with the Mercury square to Neptune, we want to be real careful in our communications, make sure that we're saying things properly, make sure that we're expressing ourselves properly. Don't leave, you know, room for misinterpretation or miscommunications or, you know, viewpoints and understandings to be in perspectives to be distorted in some type of way if you have something to say make sure that you're being clear about it and also make sure that you're understanding things clearly and not going to some emotional response over a misinterpretation a miscommunication of something so this is really what we have and also when we get to tomorrow. I'm sorry Friday's report is mostly about Saturday, but today, Friday, we're really still trail we're still in the trine energy. And the main thing that we have going on besides the trines is the Mercury square to Neptune, still an exact aspect. But it's really uh other than that, we don't have too much hitting today, other than this um opposition that's building coming exact tomorrow. Tomorrow's really the big day. And um the moon tomorrow for Saturday will also be conjuncting the heiress point while this opposition is going on. That is more explosive, like, energy. Eris wants to liberate things at basically, like, any, all, any and all causes. She's not about restriction. She's not about being held back. She's not about lack of integrity in any way. She's about getting right to the root of things, right to the core of things, throwing the apple of discord regardless of who it may offend because she's all about liberation and freedom in every every aspect of the word and when the moon is there we're feeling the same way that's our emotions that's our feelings and our feelings affect our thoughts and our thoughts affect our actions so we're going to be feeling feisty um we generally we we really need to try our best not 
to resonate personally to this energy of conflict. And I'm actually, I want to take just a few minutes to read to you guys from one of my all-time favorite books. It's called Planet in Tr Planets in Transit by Robert Hamm. I really love this book. It's a great book. Um, I want to read about the Pluto opposition Mars transit because I just kind of want to give everybody the most streamlined, clear version of what this aspect actually does. And then you can take that and you can apply it to your own life and to the circumstances that you're watching unfold on the world stage. And I just feel like it's a good thing that I should do is just read this little paragraph so that you guys um, can understand just the dynamic of the aspect in and of itself. And it says this can be a very powerful but somewhat difficult transit to handle because the energies are so intense that harnessing them creatively may be a problem, but it is not impossible. The difficulty is that your, your own or someone else's ego energies and will to dominate Pluto are running rampant in your life. If they are someone else's energies, the ultimate purpose is to test the security of your own ego. You will feel great tensions with the people in your life and possibly have serious flare-ups. First of all, you have to recognize that you have a very strong drive to win, to succeed, if necessary, to exercise dominion over others in your drive to succeed. These feelings are perfectly all right if you acknowledge them and use them wisely. If you deny them, you will experience tension within yourself with regard to others and not know the source. You will find that people's actions irritate you greatly and that you are often angry without understanding why. At its worst, the effort to suppress this energy will lead to your becoming the victim of someone else's energy. This can even lead to violence and injury, so avoid taking any serious risks that could lead to accidents during this transit. If, on the other hand, you let the energy out with no restraint, you may run you may run roughshod over everyone in your way and scramble furiously toward the top. But in doing this, you are likely to arouse truly horrendous opposition from people who struggle to the death to prevent you from succeeding. Your actions make it clear to others that you are a threat to them at the deepest psychological or even physical level of their lives. Just Pluto and Mars. But you can use this energy to accomplish much work and make great changes around you. Just don't get so wrapped up in your own ego that you step on everyone else's toes. Try to incorporate others into your work and make it a group effort as much as possible. If you do this, others will acknowledge you as the leader anyways. Last of all, avoid using underhanded tactics or becoming involved with subversive and underground elements in society. You cannot count on them and events may not turn out as you hope. For example, don't borrow money from loan sharks. See, and this is why any type of underhanded tactics, any manipulation that's been going on, any type of under under the surface, you know, less than in the light of day motives that have been happening and perpetuating um, activities that have been affecting a lot of people. Mars in Cancer and the needs of the people and what's in the best interest of the people and the nurturing of the people. Mars in Cancer with the Mercury squared in Neptune, like this just is not going to bode well for that authority if by chance that is something that they have been engaging in. Um, and lastly, it says, if you can really be open with yourself about your needs and drives now, you have the opportunity to transform your ego creatively through confrontation with others, which is not necessarily negative. This transit could help create a new you. And ultimately, you know, that is what we are in the process of doing right now with, uh, think about it. We just had our sun north node conjunction. We have... To, um, Uranus and Taurus and square to Saturn retrograding in Aquarius. We have everything that's got, we had the eclipse last week. We have all of these trines this week and the North Node conjunction. And now we have Mercury going retrograde and square to Neptune holding out while we have Mars, the spiritual warrior for the people facing off against the Dark Lord running the establishment while information from the past mercury retrograde is being re-examined for any type of manipulation or hidden or veiled or underhanded efforts that may or may not have been going on so and another thing, this is another thing I have to say about this conjunction before I let you guys go. The degree, Mars is going to be at 27 degrees of Cancer. The 
Pluto is at 27 degrees of Capricorn. The degree, the Sabian symbol, the energetic resonance in a picture form that helps us understand the way that the frequency and the vibration operates better is a violent storm in a canyon filled with expensive homes, you guys. So illusions are being demolished. Also, um, I see like this because of this Sabian symbol and because of the nature of the energetics and effect and because of really what this is representing on like a grand global scale. I do think that this could also herald in some serious economic trouble affecting households and communities resulting from the deception and the struggle to contain it, the information coming out and the backlash of that authority that is desperately trying to maintain and hang on to their power and control that they've had for such a long time and that's really crumbling right now because we're entering the age of Aquarius, the age of authenticity, the age where we're truly getting back in touch with who we are as individuals and our original authentic unique selves and finding our internal value in finding our self-worth and manifesting that into something that can carry us forward into the future instead of constantly being at the whim and the will of bosses and masters and fitting ourselves into boxes to fit the specific mold that other people need us to be in order to make a living. It's just not going to be that way anymore going into the age of Aquarius. All of the old paradigms, all of the old forms and structures that held society and humanity and culture in a certain way are crumbling right now. And this Mars Pluto this weekend is a really big significant part of it. So Again, really today for Friday, we are more just in that trine energy. It's um, an, a pretty decent day aside from all of the Mercury retrograde and the confusion. Um, we do want to be very careful with what we're taking for fact and reality right now. You know, um, there's a lot of just attempts and efforts to manipulate and to delude and to most like, I think the best word for this would be to distort reality and information, but it's also waking a lot of people up and there's a lot of good information coming through right now. It's just going to take a few weeks for us to figure out what the facts really are. We got to get through Mercury retrograde and then we got to go back through the last um, Neptune Mercury square. And by that point in time, after Mercury moves out of its shadow, I think that we will be looking at an entirely new reality, an entirely new set of facts, and this month of June is going to be, uh, like, revolutionary. <laughs> it's going to be a big month. There's a lot of changes coming, so really what we want to do and what I'm urging and urging and urging that we all do is not connect and not allow ourselves to be... Um, mechanisms for this vibration of conflict we do not want to be magnetizer um like we we don't want to be magnifiers of it we want to hold and maintain as much of a peaceful loving optimistic and most importantly faithful vibration that we can possibly have regardless of how things are looking regardless of how they seem you know or what we're hearing or what we're seeing we really need to Stay in the vibration of having faith right now, understanding that the battle, you know, the war is won. It's just these battles playing out. It might get ugly. You know, there might be some really bad um, and big events, unfortunately, that come about because of this. And throughout the course of the month, um, it's really not looking good for a lot of people around the world that are in charge of um, countries and stuff like that right now for their charts and for the end of month and June and specifically um, the one who runs this country. It's really quite interesting. So I really think that by the time we get through this month, things are going to be looking a lot different and we're going to have a lot different understanding of what's been going on with things generally over this past couple, this past year, at least this past couple of years. Um, but for now, we really need to just hold on to the peace, maintain our faith that everything is going to be just great and that we have lovely days coming, even if, you know, there's some difficulty along the way, that everything is going to be just fine in the end and we have nothing that we need to fear and we have nothing that we need to worry about and we have everything to be hopeful and optimistic and excited about. 
So that's my report for today, you guys. I guess it was more of a report for tomorrow and this weekend, but that's really when the big energetics are hitting. So everybody stay calm, cool, and collected this weekend. Do not engage in the conflict. It's just not really worth it at this point in time. There is likely to be enhanced conflict going on around us, but the more that we can be like units of peace and balance and like love and um, just optimism and faith during this time, the more that we strengthen Mars fighting for humanity. It's not about us engaging in the conflict. It's about us rising out of the conflict and enough people doing that, that it kind of stops the conflict altogether because there's not enough energy engaging in it to feed it so that it can persist. So that's kind of the goal. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that I was able to give you something that can be a benefit or value to you as you go through your day and your weekend. If you liked my report, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and um, share it with your friends if you think they would be interested. Join my Facebook group. It's Aubrey Stars on Facebook. And leave me comments. I love you guys' comments. And I will see you back here on Monday for my report for Monday in this upcoming week. It's going to be, again, you guys, after everything that we've been through this week, it's going to be a big one, a very interesting week next week, I think. So I will see you then. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.